Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's June 19th, 2014. Now, a very interesting conference took place in London yesterday. It was the Margaret Thatcher Conference on Liberty. This was live blog by the, uh, Gar by the UK's uh, Telegraph. And this is what Oliver Dugan, the guy who was blogging it, said. He said, coming up, we're going to have a conference from uh, a question from General Petraeus and former Australian Prime Minister. The question is... After America, what? He says, be sure to stay tuned if, like me, you are unaware that America had passed. Well, you know, actually, it has. As Border Patrol agents, former Border Patrol agents have said, this is orchestrated and contrived for political purposes. And, of course, the emphasis is not just on the fact that this is a, an association of former Border Patrol officers. It's really, I think, the emphasis on the fact that we have a former border and Petraeus makes it very clear of what replaces America. Here's that clip. After America comes North America. Are we on the threshold of the North American decades? Question mark. Uh, I threw that away, threw away the question mark, and boldly proclaimed the coming North American decades as the title now. It's founded on recognition that if you put these three economies together, as has been the case 20 years into the North American Free Trade Act implementation, uh, you find unique uh, countries in terms of demographics. So General Petraeus goes to this conference uh, with Margaret Thatcher's name, and he essentially dances on the grave of the sovereign state of America that he says is being replaced or has been replaced by NAFTA. Now, of course, it's ironic that Margaret Thatcher was essentially driven out of being the Prime Minister of the UK after she opposed the idea of getting rid of nation states in the European Union when she went to Bilderberg. But of course, Petraeus is a regular now at Bilderberg. Think about his career. Think about it in contrast to Smedley Butler, for example, who looked at it and said, uh, war is a racket. And he exposed the corruption, how it's being run by mega corporations for their benefit, not for the benefit of the people. Petraeus, I think, looked at this and said, uh, how can I get in on that racket? How can I run that racket? Think about the fact that in Afghanistan, they used to supply 10% of the world's heroin, but after Petraeus and the American occupation there, they now supply 90%. Good job. Then he goes to the CIA, where he presides over Benghazi and tries to sell the phony narrative from the State Department that that was merely a reaction to a video that nobody saw. Not that they're shipping arms to terrorists and training those terrorists. Now he's a member of KKR. He's become a globalist investment banker and a regular at Bilderberg. So his analysis was actually pretty interesting. He says we've got four revolutions going on in the former America, now NAFTA. He talks about the highly integrated forces of Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. And one of the first revolutions that he sees going on right now, of course, is in energy. And he says that that's geopolitically bigger than anything since China was opened to the West in the 1970s. And he points out about how energy has become so cheap in light of natural gas and fracking in the United States. He says, for example, we're paying $4.70 per BTU in the U.S. Compare that to Japan where they're paying $18 or Europe and China where they're paying $10 to $12 per BTU. So it's a huge difference. Are they going to pass those savings along to us? No, they're not. Later on the broadcast, we've got what they plan to do. They're going to raise our gas taxes, our gasoline taxes. Now, he also points out that uh, another revolution is that of manufacturing and robotics. He says, well, we used to have an assembly line with 100 people. Now we're going to have just two people and an assembly line filled with robots. Now, he doesn't think that's a problem. He says that's still going to be a sweeping change for society. He says it is coming soon to a theater near you. And he says it's actually taking place now. Again, I agree. Very few people in America understand this displacement. People look at the Mexicans, the uncontrolled immigration from Central and South America that's being pushed by the Obama administration, and they think that this is going to be a competition for jobs. That's no more true than the competition for jobs between taxi drivers and Uber. Those jobs are going to go away with self-driving trucks, self-driving taxis, I should say government-driven taxis, government-driven trucks that are being computer-controlled. Those jobs are going to go away, as are our factory jobs, as are our service jobs going to be going away, being lost to robots. Remember that we have the smallest percentage of participation in the workforce that we've had for 36 years. 
And Petraeus points out that it's interesting that as productivity has gone up, for the first time in modern history, we don't see the standard of living going up by the middle class. No, it's actually going down. They don't have a problem with that. It is going to be a consolidation of wealth. And of course, the other revolutions that he's talking about are in IT and in genetics. But this is what's happening. This is all part of a loss of sovereignty. That's where this is headed. And Petraeus spoke the truth, actually. He's very transparent about it, although most in the media are not paying attention to it. Now, to see where this is headed, take a look at this local story from Houston where a Texan is told to remove the American flag from his apartment because it was perceived as a threat to Muslims. Remember, it was just a week or so ago that Jakari Jackson did the report on Americana and symbols of Americana being censored everywhere. See, we can't have nationalism. It's being taken into a globalist new world order. This is not a humanitarian crisis. This is a planned, orchestrated move for political purposes. Take a look at the solicitation on DHS that Paul Joseph Watson discovered. The DHS is going to pay for illegal immigrants to be escorted into the U.S. They say they want them to be brought in, those under the age of 17, with dignity and respect, quote unquote. Well, I guess that means that the TSA won't be bothering them, won't be involved at that point. But listen to this solicitation from Homeland Security. This is on FedBiz Ops, and this is ICE, a division of Homeland Security. They say that the contractor shall provide unarmed escort staff, including management, supervision, manpower, training, certification, etc., to provide on-demand escort services for non-criminal, non-delinquent, unaccompanied alien children, ages infant to 17 years of age, seven days a week, 365 days a year, they estimated that initially it's going to be 65,000, uh, annually 25% local ground transportation, 25% via ICE charter. They're going to actually charter them in. This is uh, our immigration services here. I guess that takes on a whole new meaning. And 50% by commercial air. And this is a five-year contract. This is not stopping anytime soon. Now, Border Patrol agents are angry about this. As I mentioned, the former Border Patrol agents are saying this is orchestrated and politically uh, motivated. And now many of them are quitting, as Adon Salazar uh, points out in his article on Infowars today. They're quitting because of the catch and release of known gang members. See, it's not just children that are coming in. And a lot of those under the age of 17 are known gangsters. They come in even though they are inked with gang-affiliated tattoos, and regardless of whether they admit to agents that they're actually gang members, as long as they have no U.S. criminal record, they're caught and they're released, even if they self-confess, even if they confirm it with their tattoos and verbally confess that. And so uh, this uh, Border Patrol agent is saying that the uh, practice of releasing this is testing the morale of agents, many of whom are already looking for other jobs. As we pointed out earlier this week, there was a uh, tweet that went out on Monday where they said uh, they were talking about the fact they had to change diapers and do all these babysitting services. And then they said, law enforcement, what's that? And then put low morale. And then, of course, they were accused of being racist. They are understanding exactly what is happening. It is no longer about any laws. We've lost our laws. We've lost our borders. Everything is being folded into a NAFTA world, as Petraeus pointed out. Now, it was about a year ago that the government, uh, the Department of Defense, said that uh, the Drudge Report and alternative media were making it difficult for people to believe them. They said, we don't have any credibility. People are treating what we're telling them as mindless propaganda. Remember that article? Uh, government promises to stop lying because of Drudge Report spotlight. And uh, that was about a year ago. Now, the empire is striking back. Now we see the U.S. military is blocking Infowars.com for 700,000 service members worldwide labeling our site as violence, hate, and racism. Now to point out the scope of this, the Navy's private intranet system is second in size only to the entire public internet. And it was just yesterday that we pointed out that Blue Coat Corporate Web Filtering Service which is used by many large corporations, had also blocked InfoWars. That blocking was taken off after people complained about that. There's also an interesting 
article on Infowars.com from Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, where he talks about what real journalism looked like with his experiences in country with Michael Hastings. So make sure you check that out. But it's interesting to see how these lies are unfolding. If you look at the Telegraph, you see that their headline today is the Iraq crisis. ISIS jihadists see Saddam Hussein's chemical weapons stockpile. Hey, I thought that first he had weapons of mass destruction, uh, then he didn't. Now it appears that he does. And then this line, which I think is kind of interesting, the Saudi Arabians are warning Britain and U.S. not to meddle in Iraq. I would say that's a little bit late. But we've seen a lot of back and forth justification for this Iraq war. We've seen a lot of lying. Dennis Kucinich hit it on the head. It is not a mistake. It is a lie. He says, stop calling the Iraq war a mistake. And he said this on the Huffington Post. Look at the headline two days later from Harry Reid. Harry Reid on the Iraq vote. I'm sorry I was misled. It's a mistake. I guess Harry Reid didn't get the memo. But this is what Kucinich says. He says the Iraq war was not a mistake. It resulted from a calculated deception. The painful, unvarnished fact is that we were lied to. And now is the time to have the willingness to say that. As a final piece of lie that we see in the media, we see that there is now a bipartisan push to increase the federal gas tax. And as it's being sold to us, it's being sold to us as merely a 12 cent increase. Look at this Googling of the term federal gas tax increase and look at the headlines that we're seeing from all these different media outlets. For example, Washington Post calls it a 12 cent hike in the federal gas tax, as does the AP, as does Fox, as does Forbes. All these different groups are putting it out there as a 12 cent increase. Actually, it is a 50 to 67 percent increase. They're talking about going from an 18 cent per gallon tax, increasing that by 12 cents. That's a 67 percent increase in your cost. Yes, we may be seeing lower energy costs because of natural gas and fracking, but they're going to raise your energy costs, my energy costs, take it out of our household budget with federal gas taxes. And of course, this is a bipartisan effort. The mainstream media is fully on board with this. They're bragging about the fact that this hasn't been done for 20 years. In other words, it's way overdue for us to raise gas taxes by 67%. Here's the point, though. When it was last done, it was a major factor in throwing the House of Representatives from the Democrats to the GOP for over 100 years. They had dominated that. That was another major factor in that. That is going to be something that people need to get angry about. Well, stay tuned. Right after the break, we're going to have an interview with Aaron Klein. And we're going to talk to him about his revelations about Benghazi, as well as the U.S. actively training ISIS. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate, and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating.